Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Science with James. Today I'm going to be making highly concentrated acetic acid using sodium bisulfate and anhydrous sodium acetate. Before we get started, it's important to make sure that your sodium acetate is anhydrous, as if it's the trihydrate, all of the water molecules in the trihydrate will end up in your product. First, I measured out about 100 grams of sodium bisulfate, which is an excess. I then measured out about 30 grams of anhydrous sodium acetate. I mixed these two together until I felt that the mixture was mixed enough. I then added the two chemicals to a 500 milliliter round bottom flask. You can't wash off any remaining powders from the beaker or the funnel using water since all of the water will end up in your product, so I just had to scrape these off with a stir rod. I then set up for basic simple distillation. I began heating and not too long after the sodium bisulfate began to melt. As it began to melt, you can clearly see some acetic acid vapors form as this thick white cloud. However, after a few minutes, this cloud began to clear up and a visible vapor front could be seen in the still head. After a few minutes, the first drops of distillate began to come over. What's happening here is the sodium bisulfate, being a stronger acid than acetic acid, protonates the sodium bisulfate, giving us acetic acid and leaving behind sodium sulfate as a byproduct. I let the distillation go on for about an hour and a half, until the rate of collection dropped considerably. After this, I turned off the heat and moved my acetic acid into an amber glass bottle for storage. In the end, I got about 50 milliliters of highly concentrated acetic acid. This acetic acid is likely near glacial because when I add it to a test tube with some sodium carbonate, it doesn't really react very much, which is indicative of very concentrated acid. To clean everything up, I used some sodium bicarbonate solution. As you can see, the reactants in the reaction flask formed a very hard brick of sodium sulfate and unreacted sodium bisulfate in the reaction flask, which was near impossible to remove. I added some of the sodium bicarbonate solution to the flask, and after that, the brick easily crumbled apart. On the right are some videos that I've filmed, and with this acetic acid, I plan to make some esters.